Hello, we are now in the last unit of week two. I am Professor Oajaje Juliet Inegridu. The topic for unit five is assessment for online learning. Online assessment shares same features with non-online assessment in some ways. This inform, could be in form of structure and type. For instance, the common types of assessment we have are essay and objective. Do we equally have the same assessment in online learning? The use of online in some ways have added some features. Let's look at some assessments that are commonly. We have gamification. Gamification acts like a game, but it's not a game. And in using gamification, what you need to do is to ensure that the basics are being put in there. Don't bring in things that will make the learner not be focused on what needs to be learned. And um, especially when you are using it for testing. And in this case, you are bringing in a motivational factor that will encourage the learner to walk through the test. An example of gamification in testing is drag and drop. As you are dragging and dropping, it's more or less you are into a game, but it's not a game. Now you have e portfolio. In an e portfolio, what you need to do is to have a file where you are going to keep all that you have mastered in during your course of learning. You keep them bit by bit, and at the end, it could be you have to do the presentation. If it's going to act as part of your final score, you will be told that this will act as part of your final score, and that will help you to actually know exactly what to do and what score it carries. There must be a rubric that will help to guide that score. They will have badges. Badges are given to encourage learners to walk through their learning. And when you give badges, you must uh, define exactly what the person needs to do to end that badge. And it is only when it is defined that it will help to guide the learners appropriately. And when you want to use badges to form part of the final scores for the learners, also you need to define the scores that it will attract. For example, you could say, well, if you are able to get eight badges, you're going to score 3%. And you have 3% that will be added to your final score. Now you have what we call e journals. In e journals, the students are being guided on what to keep in their journal. And in this regard, what would they do is to have an instruction from the lecturer that or the teacher that will tell them what to keep, the length of time that they will keep it. And again, they need to be told how to organize such journal. All that they have learned, what they feel about what they have learned, they have the opportunity of bringing in their own learning experiences into play, writing it in their own way, and what they feel about it. They can equally come up with new ideas, and these they will present in an electronic book form, which will be given to the teacher to, for assessment or the peers. But in doing this, though it is an individual thing, it is private to them, you need to let them know from the beginning that this is going to be assessed by the teacher or their fellow students. Now we have projects. Projects can come in different form. When you are using projects, it can come that will make the student to go to the field. It can come that will make the student to be indoor to walk through what he needed to do. It could be something that they need to create idea. But one important thing is that there must be an instruction to guide the students on what they need to do and how they have to go about it. Now you have the peer review. Peer review is a process whereby the students have to assess each other's work and which could be written or oral presentation. But again, there must be rubrics to guide the students on what to assess and what to look out for. Then you have the e-poster uh, presentation. The electronic poster presentation, it is used for presentation by students as well. And in doing this, you need to equally guide them on what is required. Give them instruction on what they need to put in place. Give them instruction on the area of the font size, the font type, the size of paper that will be required, and the organization 
then the rubrics that will be used in scoring the e-poster is very important. Then online pools are equally used. They are very good technique for e inform the formative assessment. Online pool is very good for formative assessment. And if you can get it done, it helps to check how far the learner have actually learned. And especially for entry behavior, it helps you to know the learning what to consider when carrying out an online assessment first and foremost you need to get the learning outcome or competencies for the content you want to assess there you need to identify the type of online assessment you have because when you know the different type of online assessments you have you will know the right type to choose that will match with the stated learning outcomes or competency. Harness the power of learning analytics towards structuring the item because the analytics will help you to know where the weakness lies of the students, where the abilities are for the students, and where the area of needs really are. Now, structure the items to meet the learning outcome or competencies. It must not be taken out of the learning outcome or competencies. You're testing your item must meet with so when you are selecting an OER arrow item you must pick the learning outcome and ensure that the learning outcome or the item you are choosing from OER arrow is in line with your learning outcome when it is not in line with your learning outcome no matter how good that material is it's not fit for use then again you need to motivate the students to learn there are different ways you could motivate your students to take tests and where you could motivate them to carry on with their learning, you can give a thumbs up when the student gets an answer right, a smiley face, or oh, good, or a clap, electronic clapping. All these are ways you could motivate your students. Again, well, supposing the student gets it wrongly and they didn't get it right, what happens? Are you going to demotivate the student? No. You can put there, oh, try again. And that try again will help the students to catch up but if you put something like oh it's not good at all just put that and it could discourage the student or oh, oh oh no try to get something that will encourage the student to work alone then integrate feedback feedback is a great mechanism that you need to use when you are carrying out an online assessment because students want to know whether they've gotten what they are doing right or wrong and how they can uh, improve on their learning. So when you give a feedback, it is very ideal. And when you are giving feedback, have a structure that can give you individual and at the same time, group feedback when there is a need. Now, there are tools that we could use for assessment. What are these tools? First, we have the rubrics that we have mentioned, which help to guide the scoring. We have the course mapping. The course mapping, you map the course according to the learning outcome that have been stated to enable you to find out what has been achieved by the students and what is still left that is not achieved. That will help you determine that. Then you have the concept test. The concept test helps to test various concepts. So if you have a concept you want to test, you can use the concept test to test it. You bring out the concept, you have illustration to actually identify the concept and test the knowledge of the students. Then you have the knowledge survey. What does it do? The knowledge survey helps to uh, find out the extent to which the learners have learned. Because you carry out the knowledge survey, it helps you to identify where their strong points are, their weak area are, and the things you need to do to improve their learning. And at the same time, to the instructor or to the uh, teacher, it helps the teacher to identify the area too that it needs to improve on in the teaching. So where does OER come into the assessment? that we have been discussing. Because you would have been oh, we are discussing this, where does OERO comes in? Without knowing the types of assessments that is available out there and how to get to the assessment, you will not know the right OERO material to select for it. Now, let me quickly say this. You know, when you're talking about OERO, our mind easily goes to tests, illustration, diagrams, video. But do you know also the test items are quite part of OER? There are so many test items out there that are OER. So it depended on what you want and how you need to use it. So if you want to use the test from OER, what do you do? You must 
get through all these ones we discussed because you must have idea of the type of test you are looking for you must know the learning outcome and know what fits in before you go out to select your test but however always remember to check for the license before you pick such a test now what to consider in selecting OERO test we have talked about stated learning outcome is very important the learner's characteristics very important the quality of the existing test item because you must look at the quality of the existing test item before you select the learner characteristics yes because when you are looking at the learner characteristics there are very what you might use for example for ages are 40 and above might be different from what you need for ages 10 to 12 and so on there you need to look at their ability there are so many characteristics you need to look at that will know what is required then the license you must look at the license because the license is what will tell you the exact type that you need to do then the infrastructure how available are the infrastructures you want to use if the test item that you have found no matter how good it is if the infrastructure you have in your environment do not suit it there is no way it will fit in so however you must look at the infrastructure in all when you are choosing your test item that are OER rights ensure that you work with a license ensure you work with the stated learning outcome because when you do this it will help to direct what you needed to do so in conclusion i want to say that testing is quite interesting especially when you are using oer because there are so many standardized test items out there but before you use it ensure that you work with the learning outcomes you look at the license and make sure that what you select meets with the learning outcome with this i say thank you for listening